We all agree that a life certainly must belong to him who tries to save it. A life cannot belong to one who tries to destroy it. Your Majesty! My dear Condana, it has been a long time since I've seen you. Yes, Your Majesty. I see that Prince Tadaka has grown to become a fine young man. Condana, since the Queen died, I have been a mother and father to him. He had everything that he could possibly want. The palaces, the best teachers, fine horses, and young servants to attend to his every need. Your Majesty. It is truly unfortunate that the Queen died so soon after his birth. But you have brought him up well. Everyone is talking about what a fine horseman he is and his skills in the art of self-defense. Yeah. You must have heard about the great flood that has destroyed many crops and homes. Yes, Your Majesty. There is starvation everywhere. And people are dying of the plague. That is true, Sandana. But how long can I keep this news from Tadatha? I still think about your prediction. What can I do? Your son is now 16 years old. Get him married at once. He will lead a luxurious and blissful life, unaware of these problems around him. What a great idea, Sandana. I will arrange for all the most beautiful girls to come to the palace at once. Sorry, those were all the gifts I had. Wait, please take this. Oh, thank you, they're beautiful. The marriage will take place immediately. Decorate the streets, invite the kings from all the lands. Arrange for a big feast. Let there be dancing in the streets. Everyone should be as happy as I am. dream. Please, go back to sleep. What is the meaning of my dream? There is something beyond those walls. Uh. 
Chana. 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 Who? Who is that at this hour? Your Highness, what are you doing here? Chana, I need your help. We're going out for a ride. Please, get my chariot. Your Highness, I cannot do that. Where is this? Uh, it, it will soon be daylight, and I, I can arrange for the guards to... No, Chana. This is important. No one should see me. Can you help me, please? Please. Uh, your Highness, you don't need to plead. I'm your servant. I'll prepare the chariot at once. <sighs> His hair is white. His skin is wrinkled. That is an old man. Old man? What is an old man? He was once young like us, but as time passed, he grew old. Do you mean to say that all of us will grow old? But why? Your Highness, all of us will grow old. John, stop! What is wrong with you? What is wrong? Please, Your Highness, don't touch him! Why, Chana? What is wrong with him? He's sick, Your Highness. His blood is poisoned by the plague. There is nothing much you can do. Please don't touch him. Fortune. Why has this happened to him? It can happen to anyone in this world. No one can stop it. And it can happen at any time. Your Highness, look! Over there! Chana, why is that man lying there so still? And why are those people crying? Why? Those people are crying because that man is... dead. Dead? What does it mean to be dead? Dead means you, you stop living. And people cry when you're dead. Why? Only the loved ones... They, they cry because they won't see him again. Well, I die too. Your Highness, death is common. Everyone will die. You, me, the king. Turn, I, I have seen enough. Let's head back to the palace. As you command, Your Highness. Chana, that man over there, he looks different. Who is that? That man? Well, he... he's an ascetic. An ascetic? What is that? He's one who's renounced the world. Renounced the world? Why? Your Highness, it, it's getting late. Why has he renounced the world? He's seeking a solution to the meaning of life. And how does he do that? He lives a simple, disciplined life. He begs for his daily meal. He lives in a temple, okay? Your Highness, we must head back to the palace before the guards find out that you're missing. He looks so calm. will grow old, sick, death is common, everyone will die, you, me, the king, no, no, why, why should we die, he is one who has renounced the world, he's seeking a solution to the meaning of life, meaning of life, yes, I must find the answer to the meaning of life, what is the point of living if we have to die one day? There must be an end to birth, suffering and death. Your Highness! 
the princess has given birth to a baby boy. The king has arranged for a grand dinner to celebrate the birth of his grandson. An obstacle has been born to me. My dear Yasodara, the time has come for me to leave you and our son. I am to assume a more important and responsible role. My compassion for those who suffer is of greater concern, since both of you have everything in abundance. I leave you now. Farewell. I'm saddled, Kandaka, your favorite horse. Your Highness, but I, I, I beg you, change your mind. Anna, let us leave before it's too late. Yes, Your Highness, but please, let me follow you to the bank of the river Anoma. Chana, my friend, the moment has come for me to say goodbye to you and my friend in Tata. Please take these clothes, ornaments, my hair, and my sword, and give them to my father. Tell him that I have put on an ascetic's attire. From this very moment, I shall use all my time and effort for the attainment of enlightenment. I will not look back until I have achieved my noble aim. Please tell my wife and my foster mother that I am in good health. There is no need to search for me. At the appropriate time, I shall return. Kandana, look over there. Isn't that our Prince Siddhartha? Yes, it is. He must have left the palace as I predicted. Why don't we join him, Kandana? Why not? We can attend to all his needs, clean, sweep, and do all his other work until he realizes the supreme truth. Son, six years have gone by. He has eaten very little. And look at his body. If he goes on like this, he will surely die. What is this? I just saw the shining pebbles in clear water. And now I don't. Oh, yes. Now I see the shining pebbles. Perhaps if I don't exert myself too much, I will discover the truth. Sir, this is very strange. I bring my cattle to cross this river almost every day. I have no problems in getting them across, but today they refuse to cross. They look at you in great wonder. Sir, who are you? Where do you come from? Boy, I am a seeker of the truth, an ascetic. I come from afar. I shall meditate here under the cell tree. Sure? But sir, this place is dangerous at dusk. Don't worry, boy. No one knows that I am living here. Sir? My master is a nobleman. Why don't you stay with us? No, boy. Say nothing about me. 
No one should know that I am living here. As you wish, sir. But what about your food? For nearly six years, Siddhartha has been performing austerities without being able to repeat the truth. And now, he has resumed begging for food. I am confused. Master, what is the meaning of this? Have you given up the struggle? Why are you eating? Friends, we must now avoid all extremes. Avoid all extremes? But why should we do that? Just as the muddy water hides the shining pebbles, I have realized that physical and mental tortures have weakened my body and prevented my mind from understanding the truth. So what are we to do now? We shall take a little food to sustain the body. It is conducive to realizing the truth. Are you sure, Master? First you tell us to go through extremes. Now you tell us to take the middle path. Enough! You must have given up your struggle and now you're making excuses. If you cannot guide us, we we'll look for someone else. Let us leave. Yes, 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 let us leave. Friends, let us leave. friends, please listen to me. Come back. of the banyan tree and spread some white sand for my offering. Yes, my lady, right away. Sir, my name is Sajatha. I am the village chief's daughter. My maid, Huna, believes you are the tree god. <laughs> no, I'm not the tree god. Who are you? Merely a seeker of the truth. Sir, as a young girl, I once made a vow that I would make yearly offerings at this tree if I got a husband of equal status and if my firstborn was a son. My wish has been fulfilled. Please accept this offering. May you be successful in fulfilling your wishes, as I've been. If I am to succeed in becoming a Buddha today, let this pole float upstream. But if not, let it float downstream.
what do you hope to achieve with all this effort and striving? You are a prince. Return to your palace and lead a life of luxury. I will not leave this place until I have attained the highest wisdom that leads to everlasting happiness. <laughs> so be it, you foolish one. My charming daughters, I have a simple task for you. Seduce that man. <laughs> As you wish, father. Storms of darkness could not drive him from his seat. I am lost! The darkness of ignorance has been dispelled, and the light of knowledge has arisen. I have finally discovered the truth. The end of birth, old age, sickness and death. It was a hard day at the fair. Not a single customer. I want to sit somewhere here. Yes, yes, I too am tired and hungry. Let's have some food. Hey, look over there. Someone is sitting under that tree. Possible customer. I don't think he has any money, Babu. But there is something special about him. Dear sir, we are from Ukkala. We are very tired. Can we rest here? Yes, you may. And um, please, sir, accept our rice cake and honey. Sir, please tell us, what doctrine do you profess? No god can be called the creator. Huh? All phenomena are dependent on conditions of cause and effect, or action and reaction. Ignorance is the root of all evil and the cause of birth, suffering, and death. When ignorance is destroyed and replaced with wisdom, one realizes Nibbana. No teacher have I, 
An equal to me there is none. Leasing two dozen of your followers in the Buddha and Dhamma. Sir, before we leave, can we ask for some object of worship? Thank you, Venerable Sir. We will take your hair back to Ukkala and enshrine it in a stupa. Siddhartha. Look at him. He's now well fed and fair. I think he's on his way to his father's kingdom. Huh. To wear the royal crown. No, he seems to be coming this way. Enough. We should not get up to welcome him. But there is something special about him. Listen, friends, I have found the way to overcome old age, sickness, and death. Venerable sir, how did you do it? Please tell us. Please, 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 please. Let me teach you. And if you listen, learn, and practice as I tell you, very soon you will know for yourselves, not in some future life, but here and now in this present lifetime, that what I say is true. Avoid all extremes, the extremes of pleasure and the extremes of self-mortification. Practice the middle path. Venerable sir, what is the middle path? It is the noble eightfold path, which consists of perfect understanding, perfect thought, perfect speech, perfect action, perfect livelihood. Perfect effort, perfect mindfulness, perfect concentration. Preach the Dharma, excellent in the beginning, excellent in the middle, and excellent in the end. Proclaim the holy life in all its fullness and purity. Go forth and journey from place to place for the happiness, compassion, benefit, and welfare of all. Two disciples should not travel together. Oh, venerable sir, please, can I ask you a question? Dear sir, what is your question? Calm and serene are your features. For whose sake have you retired from this world? For my great teacher. Who is your teacher? What doctrine do you profess? There is a cause for everything. If there is no cause, there is no result. Thus teaches the great Buddha. Please, take me to your teacher. Believe nothing. Belief is a confession of ignorance. Therefore, do not even believe what I tell you. All I can do is to teach you to enlighten yourself. Your first duty is to abolish your own ignorance. And only you yourself can do this. Reverend, Reverend sir, sir, we would, would like, like to be admitted to your order. Come, O oh monks. Lead the holy life to end all suffering. Monks. Meet our two friends, Moglana and Saraputta. They will become my chief disciples. Help! <laughs> 
please calm down. I have been searching for you for days. What is your problem? Lord, my three boys. The brother has taken my three boys. I am helpless without them. What shall I do? Didn't you complain to the king's officers and try to get them back? Lord, of what you said. I would have the right to take away all animals belonging to farmers like me for sacrifices. I shall get your cattle back. Take me to the Brahmin. Oh, oh, oh. I shall take you to his temple, Lord. is one an outcast. By deeds is one a Brahmin. You have, have shown me the light amidst the darkness. Excellent, Lord. Excellent. I, I beg you, please take this seat. Brahmin, how much are you worth? Oh, it is not possible to estimate. I have enormous help. Let us estimate it this way. How many times the number of animals tied in this sacrificial ground are you worth? Lord, a hundred thousand times over. Then I may be worth even more. Oh, truly so, Lord. Brahman, free all these poor animals. Tie me to a place and offer my blood to the God. Lord, animals killed in the sacrifice go to heaven after death. You can conduct sacrifice to send animals to heaven. Or to receive blessings. Lord, it is for both reasons. Do you have any children? Yes, Lord. A son and a daughter. Do you wish to send them to heaven? Oh, yes, Lord. If that is so, Brahman, why don't you tie your children to the posts and cut their heads off? Lord, what are you saying? Learned Brahman, who are the people that proclaim the excellence of making sacrifices? They are the priests who have made it their profession to conduct them. You follow them blindly. Then, Lord, what is the best offering I can make to the God? Making them solely to poor animals. Lord, I can do it. But I shall not have a place in Brahmin society. Brahmin, when you show mercy to those poor animals, men of goodwill are sure to respect you. You will receive the blessing of the gods. Lord, I shall let you fall here. of the unarisen way, the producer of the unproduced way, the proclaimer of the unproclaimed way, the knower of the way, the beholder of the way. Sir, I have a message from the palace. 
Your father, King Sedodana, wishes to see you. Yes, sir, monks. Let us prepare for our journey to Kaplawati. Is everything ready as I ordered to welcome my son? Yes, Your Majesty. We're prepared to dart his favorite dishes. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, your son is here. Siddhartha is here. Well, where is he? Your Majesty, he's in the street. In the street? What is he doing there? He's begging for food. What? The king has prepared all his favorite dishes, but he'd rather beg? How embarrassing. Saddle my horses at once. My son, is it something for you, who used to travel in golden chariots to beg food in this very city? Why do you put me to shame? Oh, great king, I am not putting you to shame. I am following the custom of my lineage. But ours is the warrior lineage, and not a single warrior has ever gone begging for food. The royal lineage is yours, Devadatta. Mine is the Buddha lineage. It is the custom of my lineage for ages to receive food from house to house. Ah, oh, what kind of lineage is that that goes begging for food from house to house dressed in that, that robe? You left your wife and your only son six years ago for these? There is nothing special about the prince. We have all been tricked. What? 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 Son, you have made me realize the truth. Three times you have shown your wonders to me, but I have been a fool. Please, forgive me. Venerable sir, please let me serve you. I wish to become a monk. The daughter. Venerable sir, I am ashamed of what I said. Forgive me too. Please let me serve you and together with Pindananda, we will spread your teachings. Sadara heard that you wore yellow robes. She too did the same. When she heard of you having one meal a day, she too took one meal. And she knew that you had given up sleeping in the bed. She slept on the ground. When you entered upon the religious life, other kings proposed to her, but she refused them all. Great king, not only in this birth, but also in previous births, she stood by me and was devoted and faithful to me. Yes, Adam, 
You have endured the separation with great courage. This gave me the encouragement to attain Buddhahood. Now, it is my duty to spread the Dharma for the good of the many and for the happiness of the many. I'm proud of you, venerable sir. May your mission be a success and may the Dhamma spread far and wide. Rahula, my son, that golden colored monk is your father. He has lots of treasures. Go up to him and ask him for your share. Oh, father, even your shadow is pleasing to me. Mother asked me to collect my treasures from you. Son, I have no material treasures any longer. But if you like, I will give you the spiritual treasures. Saraputta, ordain Rahula with the treasures of the Triple Gem. What? How can he do that? Son, what have you done? I am deeply grieved by the unexpected ordination of my grandson Rahula. Since you left the palace, I have grown very fond of him. It makes me happy watching him play. He comforts me at moments when I miss you. But now it is too late. Will you grant me a request? Yes, great king. I would like to request that the noble one should not confer ordination on a son without the permission of his parents. Yes, I shall grant your request and make it a Vinaya rule. Lord? Yes, Ananda? What is it? Are women capable of understanding the Buddha's teachings? Yes, Ananda. And attaining sainthood? Women are capable. Lord, Lady Gautami has been of great service to you. She raised you, nourished you, and was a mother to you when the queen passed away. You were then only seven days old. Yes, I'm aware of that. Lord, Lady Gautami, with many other women, are standing outside this hall. Please allow them to enter your order as nuns and follow your doctrine and discipline. Ananda. Go to me and her friends, accept the eight conditions. Let that be the form of ordination. Yes, my lord, I was told you wanted to see me. Yes, please come in, Devadatta. My disciples listen to my advice. They observe my rules of discipline. But Devadatta, I have been told that you misguide them by getting the group behind you. Are you trying to break away from me by creating a schism in the Sangha? This is a grievous offense. Lord, we are suffering from admitting vulgar and despicable scavengers, murderers, criminals, and womanizers into our order. What do you propose? Lord, I propose that monks and nuns should live in forest dwellings. I also propose that all monks and nuns should beg for arms, should wear robes made from castaway clothes. All monks and nuns should meditate in the forest and refrain from eating meat. Lord, only when every member of the Sangha follow these rules can they be disciplined. Devadatta, after your ordination, did you ever live in the forest? No, sir. Have you ever worn robes made from castaway clothes? No, sir. Have you refrained from eating meat? No, sir, but I have meditated in the forest, and I have gone begging for arms. Devadatta, you have not even followed three of the five conditions you have proclaimed. Think, is it right to proclaim those conditions for my disciples? <laughs> there are many monks who approve of my proposals. Devadatta, do not divide the community of monks. If you disagree with my code of discipline, you are free to leave. I will go. I will go with the many monks who respect me and are attached to me. If your thoughts are pure, the results of your actions will be good. If your thoughts are impure, the results of your actions will be bad. 
anyone it could be to come to me or to leave me, just as they wish. But, Debodata, be mindful of your actions. Ananda, I wish to be away from everyone for a while. Lord, I have never questioned your decision. But if you have to go, where would you live? I will live alone in the forest. Lord, there are wild beasts there. There will be no danger from wild beasts. I'll find a suitable place and live there eating fruit. Don't be moved by insults. Live according to my tenets. After three months, you can come to me. of this good parrot that I found you. Otherwise, I would have been lost in the forest. Ananda, this is one of my true friends. Lord, I have never seen such wonders. I cannot believe my eyes. The animals of the forest are so devoted. Ananda, animals living in the forest are no different from other animals. Yet, Ananda, they are now tamer and more devoted than other wild animals. To me, the company of such good friends is pleasing, and so is my company to them. Lord, during the first month of your stay here, people showed a preference towards the monk Devadatta and his followers. They thought we were not pious. However, a month later, people began to hate their vulgar behavior. They stoned and banished Devadatta and his followers from the village. Now the people speak well of our disciplined ways. They invite us to their homes and eagerly fill our bowls. They ask for you each day. Ananda, did I not tell you? It's only for a short time that the truth can be concealed by the untruth. If our mode of behavior is correct, we cannot err because our weapon is the truth. Ananda, I shall return. Sinati is here to see you. Venerable sir, it is indeed an honor to see you. I have heard so, so much about you. Please, Lord, I seek your blessing. Great King. Lord, I have 500 horsemen, all evilly armed, waiting outside. We are determined to succeed or die in our attempt. And what is this mission? To kill the evil Angulimala. He has killed so many people. He is a menace. I seek the Lord's blessing that we may succeed. But Great King Vasanadi, if you should find Angulimala living a holy life, abjuring violence and other evils, what would you do? Well, in that case, Lord, I will revere him and provide him with all his requirements. Well then, Great King, here is Angulimala. <laughs> Thank you, Great King. There is no need to be alarmed anymore. 
Wonderful, Lord, wonderful. Lord. How did the Holy One manage to subdue the mighty and evil Angulimala? The Buddha has changed me. Please, please tell me how. I am Ahimsaka, the son of a royal priest. I was sent to a famous school, won many prizes, and mastered many subjects, including the art of self-defense. The other students were jealous of me. They launched a scandal involving me and my teacher's family. My teacher became suspicious and finally was hostile towards me. Upon completion of my education, my teacher demanded a strange gift. A garland of a thousand fingers is your tuition fee, Ahimsaka. Sir, I come from a family committed to the practice of non-violence. Why? My very name, Ahimsaka, means the harmless one. Please, sir, please change your demand. <laughs> no, a thousand fingers. I suddenly felt a grim determination to meet the challenge. I found a cave high in the mountain range near the forest. I began living on the raw flesh of wild animals and acquired a savage mind. I would swoop down upon any traveler on the highway. Cutting off a finger, I would hang the victim's body on a tree and wait for others to come. Soon, I became known as Angulimala, the weaver of the finger garlands. When the roads became deserted, I terrorized the villages and the towns. At last, I had a garland of 999 fingers. One more finger was all I needed. Then, one day, I spotted an old woman. I dashed towards her. But alas, the old woman was none other than my mother. I hesitated. Then I decided to kill her. Then suddenly, I saw him. He was walking with a slow, majestic gait along the highway. I changed my mind and dashed in pursuit of him. But something amazing happened. I, who can overtake a galloping horse or a deer, was unable to catch up with this monk who was walking at a normal pace. Stop! Stop, you monk! I have stopped long ago. It is you, Angulimala, who should stop. Monk, even though you are still walking, you say you have stopped. And though I have stopped, you say I have not. Oh, monk, what is the meaning of this? Angulimala, I have stopped forever, having given up violence against all creatures. But you act violently towards all. So I say, I have stopped. And you have not. Acquiring more and more defilements through evil deeds will only result in endless suffering. By eradicating all defilements, one attains Nibbana, and there will be no more rebirth. Oh, Lord, what have I done? What have I become? I have caused so much suffering. You have made me realize my evil deeds. Please, accept me as your disciple. Oh, Venerable sir, please accept my offer of robes, food, lodging, and medicine. Your generous king. Thank you, but I have everything I need here. Isn't that Angulimala? Yes, he is! That terrible murderer! Don't give him any food! Get out! You murderer! Yes, you are not the bomb! Give me, sir! Please, sir, no! Oh! 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 Look at me! Look at me! I'm now a monk! But why do they do this to me? Angulimala, previously when you killed people, 
Did you know that it was wrong? Oh, my lord. And their actions, too, were based on ignorance. Yes, my lord. Now is the time for me to show compassion towards them. <laughs> oh, where is he? Oh, is this doctor? He is my teacher. Please calm down while I speak to him. Lord, while begging for arms this morning, I met this woman with a dead child. She was asking for medicine to cure the son. What is your name and what happened to your son? My name is Kita Kotani. My only son had fever and died suddenly. Please, Lord, you must help me and give me the medicine. I can pay you in gold. My husband is very rich. I will give you the medicine. But first, you must get me some. What is it, Lord? Tell me, please. Go and fetch me some mustard seeds. Mustard seeds? Is that all? Yes. But remember, the mustard seeds must be from a house where there has been no death. I shall need now to get it, my lord. What? Mustard seed? You can take as much as you want. But my father passed away last month. My sister died last week. Nothing is permanent. There is birth and death, growth and decay, combination and separation. The glory of the world is like a flower. It stands in full bloom in the morning and fades in the heat of the day. Lord, now I realize that death is common to all. Remember, Isiko to me, one day we must all let go of the things we love. I don't feel well. I feel as if I am a prisoner and I wish to be free. Prisoner? Madam, you are the loveliest and wealthiest of all the women in this kingdom. You know that men seek your company for your wit and your charm, not just for the joy of your body. I know all that, but I sometimes wonder if being an ordinary wife with a difficult husband and sickly children is not to be envied. What are you saying, madam? The ordinary woman is first a slave in her father's house. Then she is a slave in her husband's house. But you, you are free, madam. Am I? Then there must be something else, something that beauty and wealth, husband and children cannot bring. Madam. Oh, I would give up all that I possess to find that freedom. Maybe you can find that freedom that you seek. What do you mean? Well, madam, they say he has all the answers. Who? The Buddha. The Buddha? Yes, I have heard of him. Well, he is staying with some of his monks in your grounds. Here? In my grounds? Then I must see him immediately. But, madam, he's an old man. Folks so say he's not interested in beauty and charm of women. I know that. Don't you understand that beauty and charm will fade? There must be something else. The Buddha must know. I must find out. Get my carriage ready at once. The craving of the person addicted to careless living grows like a creeper. He jumps from one life to another like a monkey swinging from tree to tree, looking for fruit in the forest. Venerable Master, 
I am Amapali, a courtesan. I have tasted the full sensual pleasures of this world, and it has brought me only pain, longing, frustrations, and emptiness. Dear child, you must control your body and your mind. And how do I do that, master? Give up attachment, lust, craving, and all evil deeds. Cultivate good deeds, speech, and thoughts. Yes, my lord. I will do as you ask. I will cultivate good deeds from now on. May I invite you and your monks to have your meals at my house? As you wish, my child. But lord, you are not serious. You are a prince like us. How can you dine with a courtesan? You must dine with us. Oh, forgive me, Lord. I do understand if you cannot dine with me. Within the Dharma, there is neither prince nor courtesan. Tomorrow, we shall take our meals at Ampapadu's house. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Listen very carefully. At the end of three months, I will pass away. What? 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 Pass away? No! For the good, the welfare, and the happiness of gods and men, let the Lord live out his life. Enough. Ananda, do not ask that of me now. The time to ask that has gone by. What are we to do when you are gone? Monks, the Dharma I have taught has no secret versions. I am not a teacher with a closed fist. Be diligent, mindful, and virtuous. With well-directed thoughts, guard your mind. He who lives heedful in this Dharma will escape life's wanderings and put an end to suffering. I will rest here under these sound trees. Look, between sound trees are covered with blossoms. No, it is not the season. How oh, wonderful. Look, mandala the flowers and sandal the power to fall from the sky. Monks, this is not our perfect one. It's honored, respected, revered, or venerated. Sir, I would like to speak to the Buddha. Enough, Rensubata. Do not worry the accomplished one. He is very tired and weary. Ananda, do not prevent Subhata. Let Subhata speak. I have some doubts, venerable sir. And what are they, Subhata? Lord, there are good, well-known followers of other religions. They too try to show superiority of their respective religions. That is true. If that, that is true, my lord, how can we find a true and proper religion? Any form of religion is proper if it contains the noble eightfold path. It's the universal truth. It is in the nature of all formations to dissolve, attain perfection through diligence.